Hey there, fourth grade, it's Mr. Remedies back with lesson number three in our uh, weekly study of fairy tales. Today, oh, man, I can't, I can't begin to describe how excited, how useful this lesson is. Uh, today, we're talking about fairy tales, and specifically, we're going to talk about how fairy tales um, exist in different cultures. So let's scoot on over to our learning goals and success criteria today. Today, our goal is is that we are learning to understand that the same fairy tales exist in many different cultures. Right? Uh, success criteria for you today, let you know you're on the right path, is I can define a fairy tale. You can say to yourself, I can define culture. And three, I can describe the different ways fairy tales from other cultures are told. Uh, this is a great, 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 fantastic lesson for you guys. Um, hopefully by the end of this lesson, not only will you understand that fairy, the same fairy tales exist in different cultures, but you can maybe gain a little bit more of an appreciation for diverse cultures and realize that despite detailed differences, that the human experience is pretty similar all across the globe. All right, guys, I want to jump into some vocabulary. Uh, fairy tale. You know, just as a quick review for our definition this week, a fairy tale is an imagined story that includes magic. Okay? Uh, culture, though, is the food, language, clothing, tools, music, arts, customs, beliefs, and religion of a group of people. Okay? Uh, these two things are very important to keep in mind as we talk about uh, the fairy tales in different cultures. Let's look at an example, shall we? Let's move on to that. All right. Uh, first, we're going to start with the Persian Cinderella. Uh, one thing I thought we might do is really just re uh, watch a couple of few minutes of a read aloud to remind ourselves to jog our memories about exactly what's going on with the Persian Cinderella. Hey guys, today for our read aloud, we're going to be reading the Persian Cinderella. And this is by Shirley Climo and the art is by Robert Florskak. And I have been waiting a long time to share this book with you guys. You know how much I love multicultural Cinderella stories. Obviously with Adelita, the rough face girl, the smudge face girl, with the Korean Cinderella. I absolutely love a fairy tale that we're all so familiar with, but we can see other cultures in from different places around the world, but still have that same core story. You know I love that. So today we're going to be reading the Persian Cinderella. Let's go ahead and get started. Long ago, when Persia was a land of princes and poets, there lived a maiden named Satere. Her name meant star, and it was given her, and it was given her on the day she was born because of a star-shaped mark on her left cheek. Satere had scarcely opened her eyes to see or her mouth to cry when her mother had died. Although she lived with her stepmother, two stepsisters, three aunts, and four female co cousins in the women's part of the house, she was often lonely. Cetere seldom saw her father, for he was busy in the world of men. Her stepmother and aunts ignored her, paying no more heed to her than a fly on the wall. She belonged to no one, and nothing belonged to her. She wore her stepsisters' cast-off clothes and ate their leftovers, sometimes finding only melon rinds to fill her dish. Even so, Cetere grew lovelier with the years. The brows above her dark eyes arched as gracefully as the path of an arrow. Her long black hair gleamed like polished ebony. She was delicate with slender ankles and tiny feet, but her beauty only added to her misery, for it made her stepsisters jealous. Sometimes Layla, the older sister, would pinch Satire's cheek and scoff, that's not a star, it's a dirty spot. Nahid, the second sister, would wrinkle her nose in disgust, our little sister must wash in a mud puddle. Then Satire would run into the walled garden and scrub her face in the fountain, but she never could rub off the mark. One morning in late winter, Satire's father honored the women in the quarters with a visit. Prince Mer Merdad invites all to the royal palace for no ruse, the new year, he announced. Opening his money pouch, he gave everyone a large gold coin. Buy cloth in the bazaar to make new clothes, he told them. As he handed Satire her coin, he patted her hand and added, Choose wisely. Each girl and every woman, no matter her age, covered her head with a cloak so that no stranger might look on her face. Then, like a flock of blackbirds, the mothers, daughters, sisters, and cousins flew down to the river. All right, guys, and so we're going to end 
uh, there. Hopefully, just a little, just three minutes of uh, a read aloud will jog your memory. Okay? And let's look at some of the facts of the Persian Cinderella. Things, details uh, that we can garner uh, from this story. Okay, so remember uh, the facts. This takes place in Persia. Uh, it is called the Persian Cinderella. Persia is uh, what we would call modern day Iran, which is in the Middle East, so very far away. Um, you have to take a plane to get there. You have to fly over a couple of uh, an ocean. Very, very far away from uh, Copper Cove, Texas. Uh, the main character is treated cruelly by her stepmother, stepsisters, and others. It says the other women in the house uh, ignore her and treat her cruelly. Uh, even though we didn't read, uh, we didn't see it here on the video. The video we continue, the story we continue. They go down to the bazaar, which is a marketplace, and the main uh, Cinderella character starts to get her nice clothes for the celebration from a magic jug as opposed to a, uh, a storefront. Once at the celebration for no ruse, uh, uh, she lost an anklet, a very nice, beautiful anklet. And then finally, through, um, through some investigation or through like a search, uh, she eventually marries the prince, um, which is, ends in classic Cinderella sto story. Huh? Uh, so these are the facts for the, the main talking points for the Persian Cinderella. Let's look and really examine this idea that uh, fairy tales exist in different cultures by looking at another Cinderella story. This time, uh, we're going to talk about the rough-faced girl. So similarly, let's look at a video, you know, give us three or four minutes of this to jog your memory and see what we can come up with as far as major plot points for The Rough Face Girl. The Rough Face Girl by Rafe Martin and David Shannon. Once long ago, there was a village by the shores of Lake Ontario. Off from the other wigwams of this village stood one great huge wigwam. Painted on its sides were pictures of the sun, moon, stars, plants, trees, and animals. And inside this wigwam, there was said to live a very great, rich, powerful, and supposedly handsome, invisible being. However, no one could see him except his sister, who lived there too. Many women wanted to marry this invisible being, but his sister said, only the one who can see him can marry him. In this village, there lived a poor man who had three daughters. The two older daughters were cruel and hard-hearted, and they made their youngest sister sit by the fire and feed the flames. When the burning branches popped, the sparks fell on her. In time, her hands became burnt and scarred. Her arms, too, became rough and scarred. Even her face was marked by the fire, and her beautiful long black hair hung ragged and charred. And those two older sisters laughed at her saying, ha, you're ugly, you rough faced girl. And they made her life very lonely and miserable indeed. One day, these two older sisters went to their father and said, father, give us some necklaces. Give us some new buckskin dresses. Give us some pretty beaded moccasins. We're going to marry the invisible being. So their father gave them these things. Dressed in their finest, the two girls marched through the village. All the people pointed and stared. Look at those beautiful girls, they said. Surely they shall marry the invisible being. And if those two girls were proud and hard-hearted before, they were even prouder now. They walked haughtily through the village. At last, they came to the wigwam of the invisible being. And there was his sister waiting. Why have you come? She asked. We want to marry the invisible being, they answered. That's why we're here. If you want to marry my brother, she replied, you have to have seen him. Tell me, have you seen the invisible being? Of course we've seen him, they insisted. Can't you see how pretty we are? Can't you see the beautiful clothes we wear? Oh yes, anyone can tell that we've truly seen the invisible being. All right, she said quietly. If you think you've seen him, then tell me, What's his bow made of? And All right.
right, guys, we are just a, a, a quick refresher. Hopefully it jogs your memory about what the story is like. Uh, this story uh, is done in a little bit of a different perspective. At the first part of the story, you really see um, a lot of details about the, the sisters, the older sisters. Okay? Uh, so we'll get to uh, jogging your memory about what happened specifically with the rough-faced girl. But I'm sure you guys can kind of guess or remember or predict what happens. So the facts, you know, the major talking points. Okay? Uh, this story, The Rough-Faced Girl... Uh, it takes place near Lake Ontario, which is in Canada, uh, which, although far away from Copper's Cove, uh, you can still potentially get there by driving a car. Uh, it, Lake Ontario is nowhere near as far away from Copper's Cove as, let's say, Persia. Okay. But, okay, you'll see some similarities. Uh, the rough-faced girl is treated incredibly cruelly by her older sisters, uh, made to... Uh, just to tend to the fire and get burned and, and kind of dirty from the soot. Uh, even though we didn't see it in our little uh, re review reminder video, uh, the rough-faced girl does uh, eventually go and make clothes from the bark of a birch tree, um, which initially uh, looked very ratty, very unconventional. Uh, some said uh, some of the people in the village said strange, odd-looking clothes. But if you guys remember, uh, the rough-faced girl was able to answer the sister's question uh, and questions about uh, the invisible being's bow and eventually the sled. And, and then the rough-faced girl is allowed to enter the wigwam and marry the invisible being. What? So here, though, we see that uh, the two stories take place in very different parts of the world. Uh, some of the details are um, the some of the details are different, but the theme and the messages are the same. And you know that's a really cool uh, thing to really grab a hold of. That's a really great idea because uh, the human experience is very, very similar across the globe, okay? Uh, there are some themes and messages that just kind of speak to us as humans, uh, no matter whether we're from uh, North America or the Middle East um, or Far East Asia. And I think that's really cool. And I think fairy tales kind of clue us in on that, okay? uh, You will also see that the details reflect the culture, right? Uh, details in the story... Uh, in the Persian Cinderella, the Cinderella character went to a market uh, to get her clothes where, um, and that clues us in that in that culture, they did have marketplaces. Uh, be they did live in uh, bigger cities, right? whereas in the rough-faced girl, uh, she had to make her own clothes because that is the culture of the people um, in the story, and so on and so forth. So I think these are really great uh, indicators that fairy tales can let us in on some things. We can learn about different cultures while still learning uh, a central theme and a, a general theme that is useful to, to boys and girls and men and women all over the world. Pretty sweet. Let's move on to, bam, review. Uh, we know that review, uh, fairy tales exist in different cultures. Fairy tales often share themes regardless of culture. And the details of the story reflect the culture in which the story takes place. So fairy tales, super awesome in the fact that uh, they exist in many different cultures from all across the world. All right, a little bit of a longer lesson today uh, due to our videos. However, you guys have absolutely rocked it. As always, I've been Miss Remedies. You've been my fantastic fourth graders. And we will see you down the line.